everybody. It's time for the Wolf Den Podcast. Hello. How are you? And well. Hey. What's up? You're very dark. Why is it so dark? I, that, you know what? That's on you. <laughs> this, is, this is your set. I'll, I'll, I'll fix that later. Uh, guys, Wolf Den Podcast. Thanks for being here. Love you so much. Mwah, mwah, love you. Hey. How's uh, it going? Today, uh, we're going to talk about leaks and yes. rumors ooh. Yeah, ooh, ah. we have lenovo legion go a little bit of asus rog ally as well or yeah. x it's called the x or something um that uh they kind of like together um also remember epilogue i got them confused with another company and then i saw the tweet you put out and then i remembered of uh, who they are who did you <laughs> they, confuse them with i think i confused them with analog because the names are similar and also like did you think that analog made a i didn't remember game what, boy doc or something? i didn't remember who made the game boy doc okay i just assumed epilogue was another company along the same lines as analog right no i right? understand they're very similar yeah. and, and the design philosophy exactly is similar. that's the big thing yeah uh but yeah epilogue they make great mm-hmm. game boy uh the consoleizer mm-hmm. i guess you could call it uh that rips roms and save files and stuff and you allows you to play games on the computer they're making a new one uh potentially two new ones what else black ops 6 uh xbox uh, yeah. lying out their teeth again it, it, there's a lot of like more uh fallout from uh all the stuff that's going on with microsoft and activision uh, follow-ups on uh, Black Ops 6 that we know is coming um, yes. and whatnot. Trailer dropped today. so I did watch it. A lot of presidents. Weird. <laughs> there is definitely going to be 9-11 in this I know. In this That's, game. I, A thousand percent. I, I don't. They didn't show the right Bush. Right. <laughs> but it's they're the, totally get, they're going to yeah. get there. It, it's going to if not this one, then you know the next one's going to be, and no. it's going to be so bizarre. It's going to be this one. It's already bizarre. We'll, we'll, we'll get uh, to it. It's going to make me want to play the single player. I haven't played a single player <laughs> oh in a Call of Duty a long time, but that's going to be the thing to do it. We'll we'll get there when. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But before we get into 9-11, <laughs> we got to talk about PlayStation Plus games that you get Yay! for free with your PlayStation Plus subscription. So uh, this is part of a blog post on the PlayStation blog announcing uh the days of play celebration that kicks off on may 29th which is tomorrow days of play is like their big uh summer sale event and whatnot okay um so they're doing that they're gonna have a whole bunch of things to celebrate including uh new avatars a bunch of discounts but the big thing and also because june is next week uh that means new games on playstation plus and that's what we're here for so the new games for PlayStation Plus Essentials, which is available to all tiers of PlayStation Plus, uh, as Bob brightens the light and his washing machine goes off. <laughs> it's LG, right? Yeah, so we have the same. Yeah. Oh, well, now I have a Samsung washer, so it's two different. Uh, uh, you don't have the wash tower? No, no, I didn't uh, have the wash tower. I had a wa- LG washer and dryer, and they both had the same jingle, but now I have a Samsung washer. And it's a completely different jingle that I can't hear from upstairs. I had to get the wash tower because they designed the room poorly. Well, now they have, I don't know if you see, now they have all-in-one washer and dryers where it's just one thing. Yeah, GE has one. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else someone, makes it. Someone else makes it. That, I, how, why has it taken so long? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Welcome to the Wolfden Podcast, your number one <laughs> washer dryer podcast. Play the Home Depot theme song. <laughs> PlayStation Plus games for the month of june free games that are available to you across all tiers of playstation plus uh spongebob squarepants the cosmic shake aew fight forever and streets of rage 4 have you played streets of rage 4 i have not and i really want to oh now's your chance now's my, no, I, I was gonna playstation s- plus i was gonna say pretty poor uh month but streets of rage sure, streets of rage not? yeah i'm uh, looking forward to that i don't know what is the status of aew fight forever is i know it came out like and it was mixed. People were mixed on it. And I don't think they improved it necessarily since it came out. It's supposed to be like the one game that like they would just keep updating with like new roster members, new game modes, bug fixes, all that. And I don't think they have. <laughs> yeah, I that that sounds very ambitious. Yeah. So and then SpongeBob, people still like that. 
I don't know why people like SpongeBob. Yeah. There was more announced on the on the f- Days of Play announcement. Uh, EA Sports FC 24 uh, will be available until June 18th. Um, so that's still part of your PlayStation Plus subscription. Um, PSVR 2 games are being added oh. for premium members. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Ghostbusters, uh, Rise of the Ghost Lord, Walkabout Mini Mini Golf, Synth Riders, Before Your Eyes, and Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapters 1 and 2. Um, PlayStation 2 games are being added uh, for premium members. Tomb Raider Legends, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, Sly Cooper, and The Thievius Raccoonus. We talked about this last week. The rumors of Clone Wars means that we're getting PS2 native games on PS5. These are the games. Uh, Tomb Raider Legend. Only three? Uh, I guess the start. That... They're going to roll out. And it's a random assortment of games. It like w- There's one PlayStation uh, exclusive game. Yeah, or one PlayStation first party game. There, the rest I, are you know th- from third parties. I kind of assumed that uh, the the rumors of us getting PlayStation Two Classic games meant we'd get like a big catalog. No, nope. we're getting three Just games three and three <laughs> random games. Random. Very I will random. say Tomb Raider Legend. I did really enjoy that game back in the th- back in the day. Uh, holds up real, uh, pretty well. The Clone Wars was good, but I don't know if that really holds I up don't all that much. This. Um, we, I think we have it on GameCube. This is for the movie, The Clone Wars? No, this is a, this is before the movie, The Clone Wars, came out. This this was the episode two tie-in game. Oh. Yeah. And they call, okay. And they call the, it's confusing because there's, first there was this, then okay. there was the 2D animated series that Jenny Chartakovsky did, then there was the, the CG movie that led into the CG animated show, then there's also the X-Men video came from the 90s. Jesus Christ. There's like a lot of Clone Wars out there. So there's this one. This is a weird one because you see in the footage, they advertise, you know, on foot missions as a Jedi, but 90% of the game is vehicle combat. Uh, I mean, isn't that just a uh, Battlefront? No. <laughs> it's reminding me a lot of, ba- it looks exactly like Battlefront. It's like a half-ass Battlefront. Half-ass Battlefront. Okay, yeah. so you can get half-ass Battlefront. Half-ass Battlefront, month. a good Tomb Raider game, and Sly Cooper 1. I've uh, never played it. I played Sly Cooper 4. That was very good. People like Sly Cooper? Yeah, Sly Cooper's fun. So if you still have a PlayStation Plus premium subscription, yeah. now's your time to cancel <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. All right, and more stuff. Check out the PlayStation oh, Blog wait, more details. Game on... Trials 2K 2024? Uh, WWE 2K 24. Uh, f- yeah, from for PlayStation Premium members, you can play the whole game. Yeah, no, premium. not the whole game. No, anybody have premium here? Anybody? I don't know. I got into a little bit of a Twitter spat because they announced that it was like the anniversary of Infamous One, and I looked. I look. I looked it up online. To my knowledge, there is no way to play Infamous One on PS Five, okay. even with the the premium subscription. Somebody was like trying to correct me, but my point still stands. There are too many hoops to jump through in order to play Infamous One on PS5 or any current PlayStation system. And it's like, you know, why are you celebrating a game you kind of don't want people to know you can play? Yeah. Yeah. It's the PlayStation like model for like their subscription service is just, it's needlessly confusing and restrictive in terms of like giving you access to his back catalog. Like they almost, feel, I almost feel like they're doing it out of obligation rather than because they want to do. Yeah, it. Yeah, they have nobody there who's like working on making yeah. things available. They just don't. They they don't care about that stuff. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, thank you to Eric Henley. Uh, haven't heard that name before. With the seventy-one <laughs> months, uh, Lorian, thank you for the nine months. Happy Tuesday, boys. What's the news? Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> uh King Wizard, thank you for the twenty-two months. Uh, my arm are like my rims. Baby Dude. girl, 22s. Is oh, that the, a, the biceps. Is that a yeah. quote from something? Anyway, Samps, thanks for gifted sub. And Thundery Bubs, thanks for the prime. Guys, how are you doing? Somebody said something in the, ch- in the YouTube chat. It was Matt who said, Yo, in the pod, straight up docking it. <laughs> yep, that's what we're calling it. Docking it. <laughs> That's what we can expect from the YouTube chat. Yes. All right. Let's talk about the Lenovo Legion Go rumors and, uh, yes. and leaks and whatnot. This is from Video Cards with a Z because it's cool. Yeah. That's how you can know. 
Uh, Lenovo is preparing a revised version of the Legion Go. It's Windows 11 gaming handheld, unlike the upcoming uh, ROG Ally X, which I believe is just rumored right now, right? Yeah. No, no, they said we have something coming. Okay. And I think they straight up called it the ROG Ally X. Okay. But all we know is like a silhouetted picture of it. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with all this. I know. Um, which is expected to have an upgrade specs. So the new Legion Go version will likely be a cheaper model, possibly with a less powerful AMD CPU. Uh, the current Legion Go features an 8.8 inch screen with a uh, two, uh, two, 2560 by 1600 resolution. Uh, an upgrade over the Ally's 7-inch 1080p screen. Both handhelds come with AMD Ryzen Z1 Phoenix APUs uh, featuring up to 8 Zen 4 cores and 12 RDNA. All right. We got two devices. We got the Legion Go and we got the, the Legion Asus Go RG yeah. Ally. Those are the two everybody compares the two to. Yes. They are both pretty much identical. They both have an AMD uh, Z1 Extreme, which I guess is the Phoenix that they're talking about. Yes. Everyone calls it the Z1 Extreme. Uh, the, they're Windows machines. They're both Windows machines. The Ally has a 7-inch 1080p screen, whereas the Legion Go has an 8.8-inch 1440p screen that's a little taller, mm -hmm. though it ends up being 1600. Uh, so it's higher resolution, and the screen is a lot bigger, and it's it, it it looks nicer. But the screen doesn't have variable refresh rate. I kind of like the Ally slightly more for that. Uh, but uh, otherwise, they're the same. Oh, and also the Legion Go. I don't think it says it here. Uh, the Legion Go has uh, faster RAM. Right. The Ally uh, has slightly slower RAM, but it's got the same. They both got the same 16 gigabytes of RAM. So. Uh, they're pretty much the same device. Yeah. Uh, there's just some slight differences uh, with with some of the specs, but they pretty much run things the, the, the same. Anyway, continue. Uh, reports from Windows Central suggest that uh, Lenovo might be considering using such an APU for a new light model. Although specs are not yet confirmed, it's speculated that the new Legion Go uh, could be could feature a smaller screen and lose those detachable gamepad features similar to the Nintendo Switch. A simpler, more ergonomic design akin to the ROG Ally might help Lenovo attract more market share. So that's the other thing yes. I left out. The, the, the big thing with the Lenovo is that it's got Joy-Con-like controllers. Yes. Uh, however, I never use those anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, when Nintendo showed off, like, you, you can play the Switch with attached Joy-Cons like that. I think myself included but i think most people tried that once yeah. and never again yeah it allows you to do some cool stuff uh with this particular it allows me to like put the lenovo use it like just like a tablet and that's yeah. it it is a little small to just be using like a tablet mm -hmm. um but uh i wouldn't mind a version of this that doesn't have detachable controllers right. I, I think the detachable controllers is a little bit unnecessary yeah uh, whatever the Legion Go Lite ends up being, Lenovo's communication with its Legion Go community needs improvement, especially regarding software features. For instance, there is still no official driver that enables AMD fluid motion frames, frame generation on the device, unlike the Ally, which already supports is. this technology. While gamers can use third-party solutions, the user interface and software are just as crucial as the hardware for these devices. The current price for a Legion Go is $629 on Amazon, which is already $70 lower at launch in September in October, uh, the light version would almost certainly have to cost less. So this doesn't sound like it's gonna be the next generation Legion Go. It's just gonna be like a smaller version. Yeah, and that's what they're rumoring about the uh, RG Ally X. It seems right. like they're gonna be pretty similar. Um, they have here uh, what they think the specs are gonna be for the for the two devices. Uh, the two are in the middle right here. We got Lenovo Legion Go Lite and the Asus RG Ally X. Um, actually, wait. It says uh, this spec list says Ryzen Z1 question mark. So it might not even be the extreme. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the article says the Legion Go uh has uh never been available with less with the less expensive Z1 non-extreme version. Um, but it might need that if it's gonna go for a lower price point. It might go with the non-extreme version. Okay, that would be pretty bad because <laughs> uh, nobody likes the RG Ally that doesn't have the extreme in it. Okay. P people don't like that one. So it's got a 
go for a much lower price point. Did, did they say, no, no, they don't, they don't have like an actual price. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be a lot lower. I, yeah. Already the RG ally uh, without the extreme sells for like super cheap. You can yeah. get it for like 400 bucks at Best Buy, sometimes even less than that. Uh, so I can't see them ha making something that's that cheap. Um, I hope that's not the case. There are other AMD processors that could that they could be using right now, uh, but uh, people like using the Z ones because there's just so much compatibility with them. They, right. They, they, every everything seems to work really great with them right now. Um. Anyway. Uh. So yeah, I don't know that that would be a little disappointing if it's not in in, in a, an extreme. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks like it's going to be USB four as well. Which uh, is good because then you can do the thing where you like dock it and plug it into like a, a graphics card or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's all the specs we know for a Lenovo Legion yeah. Go Lite. It looks like, yeah, that's this is going to be an iteration. It's not going to be anything that's going to be more powerful than one that you already have. So if you already have a Lenovo Legion Go, you don't have to worry. You're not uh, going to be immediately outclassed. Yeah, I mean, unless you want something smaller because that looks like it's going to be what's going to be the big selling point. I would not mind a smaller legion go, yeah because it is huge yeah it's massive <laughs> it's ridiculous uh but here we have specs for the rg ally x that i have not seen like right previously we we mentioned a bunch of this stuff uh but i think we mentioned that it might have more ram i think we said it was gonna have 16 gigabytes which is the same as the yeah. old one but this one says 24 gigabytes which right. would be huge news that because that is more than any of the other mainstream windows handhelds right but is that enough to like give it like a substantial lead over the other ones it feels well i mean yes yeah but uh, if you're in the market for buying one right now yeah. like getting the one with the most ram would make the most sense got it but if you already have one i don't know if it's worth upgrading to it's kind of it reminds me a lot of the steam deck oled mm -hmm. where uh it has faster ram uh but it's not worth upgrading to got it. you know uh but I don't know. I, I I don't I I don't know if we'll know until we get it in our hands and we see what games work better. I I haven't actually run into a game that just doesn't work though on any of these yeah. PC handhelds. Everything seems to be fine. Right. Uh, it's not like back in the day where games just would not work on a computer. Like these yeah. days, games will work. They'll just be shitty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do see that. Uh, the Ally X is going to switch to uh, USB 4 for the external GPU instead of their proprietary oh. uh, plug, whatever. That's big news. Okay. You know, that, that is big news. They touted that plug as like, you know, a major thing for like better connection and better graphical output. But now that you're getting, you know, the USB 4, then now it's standard. You can just use any off the shelf external GPU you want. Yeah, that would be a great reason to get this if you were question if you if if some people are getting the lenovo specifically for that port so right. that it's easier for them to adapt it to other yeah. stuff or graphics cards or whatever because that asus proprietary like external graphics card thing is a lot more expensive right. than just getting an external thing like what i have the yeah. little razor thing that i have um so i don't it would make sense if they uh they might have heard, you know, people complain yeah. about their stupid proprietary thing and then just end up uh, adapting this to it or whatever. Yeah, because, like, who has the proprietary one who, and who uses it? Like, you literally, yeah. you'd only buy that if you have another Asus product that uses it. Yeah. Um, and then I guess that's, oh, a uh, small little thing that you mm. might notice here. Uh, all of, oh, wait. Okay, so what is what is a two two four two NVMe SSD? What is that? Two four two. NVMe. I didn't. Uh, shit's already confusing as it is with okay. like all the different numbers and stuff. It's a little longer. Okay, that's what the Lenovo uses, which I never knew that before. The RG Ally X, they're saying that it would have a full sized SSD, like on a PlayStation. That's what the two two eight zero is. Yeah. Okay. So that would be ridiculous. Right. How <laughs> <I'll, I'll, laughs> fuck they're gonna fit that in there. Um Yeah, now I need I need more information about this. I mean, but the light is like it's a completely different market. It, yeah. it seems the light is gonna be the cheap it, it seems like Lenovo's 
pitching the light as a cheaper alternative. And it seems like if these specs are to be believed, it seems like the RG Ally X is going to be positioned in just a replacement of the current ally. Yeah. Uh, f- would the le- would the Legion Go light be a replacement for the Legion Go? If it doesn't have a Z1 Extreme, then no. If it has a regular Z1, right. then, then... Wait. Yeah, if it, if, if it has a Z1 Extreme, then pro- maybe. Okay. But if it doesn't... If it only has a regular Z1, then definitely not. It'll be shittier. Right. It'll be significantly shittier. Because I'm picturing like more people buying the Legion Go light than the actual Legion Go, just from the size alone. I don't think anyone got a Legion. <laughs> so, so I think it was uh, Nerd Nexus did a video mm-hmm. on it uh, a couple months ago, and they or was it the MSI Claw? They did a video on one of them, and they were talking about the sizes of the subreddits for each device. Okay, and of course, the MSI Claw has the smallest. Subreddit. Of course, sorry, Will. Of course, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> the next up is the Lenovo Legion Go, and the next up above, above, above that is the Asus RG Ally, and then mm-hmm. the next up above that is the uh, Steam Deck, which yeah. is not a surprise at all. Yeah. That, that They seem to be in that realm of popularity. And right. it's because Steam Deck is the easiest and, and most popular and yeah. the easiest to use and probably the one I would recommend the most. Mm-hmm. And if you got to play games that won't run on Linux, the ROG Ally is the next one that I would recommend. And then if, for whatever reason, you need USB 4, I would recommend a Lenovo Legion. Okay, so Legion Go is like safely in third place in terms of the handheld. Yeah, but like barely. Like, yeah. like it's pretty much as good as the Asus ROG Ally. I just like the form factor of the Asus more. Yeah. Because it doesn't need to be as big as the Lenovo. And the, I like the screen a little more on the Ally, even though it's lower resolution. Uh, you got variable refresh rate. 120 hertz is totally fine. Yeah. And, and, Again, most of the time when you're playing these consoles, you're not playing at the full resolution anyway. Yeah. Almost all the games that I play are like 720p and lower, so yeah. it, it, you don't need all of that screen. Also, the biggest reason why I like the Asus over the Lenovo, the Lenovo is loud as fuck, and that they, they have to fix that with the yeah. light. It's so goddamn loud. The Asus is completely silent. It right. might be quieter than the Steam Deck. Okay. So... Uh, pretty decent year for PC handle. Also, uh, we're we're getting. Uh, I think we're finally in. Uh, you know, these things have finally taken off. Yeah. So, I mean, people are interested in this stuff. I'm a little disappointed that they would uh make new ones every year. Yeah. But if they're doing like these like kind of offshoots, like a like a light version or like uh like a like- small change like yeah. a small little little spec bump or, or or just fixing some problems that they used to have um then i think that's fine well it seems like they're really they're going the route of like what pc uh hardware manufacturers have been doing for years where like they just keep releasing like the slightly better version of what yeah. came out last year but like your last year's version should still be just as good and still do everything you need it to do you know, it won't maybe won't be until like, you know, six year, five years down the road, six years down the road where you need to like replace it. Yeah. You know? I mean, the, the weird, the, the reason it feels weird is because these are very close to consoles. They yeah. feel like they're consoles, right. but, and, and consoles we get, you know, once every like six years. And in, in this mm-hmm. case, we've been waiting forever for new consoles. Yeah. Uh, but uh, these are PCs and they're PC manufacturers. These guys yeah. aren't making money from the software sales or whatever, except for Valve. Uh, so this, it feels weirder to get a yearly release for these things, but yeah. you're right. They are, these are all laptop manufacturers except for yeah. Bell. So, uh, we're going to see spec bumps. The, the, the only thing that I hope and that I'm looking for with this is that people who just bought one like last year or got one for Christmas. I hope those people don't feel like they're missing out now. Yeah on on these uh little changes and that's why i kind of like the way lenovo's going they're they're making a like a completely different like price rate yeah version which which i think is uh it's good for people who just got a lenovo yeah but asus if it's th- if that thing is the same price as the ally and i got it for christmas i'd be a little upset yeah Although it ha- it's been a while since the Ally came out, but still, if I got it for fucking Christmas and then mm-hmm. they announced the X and it's the same price, I'd be a little pissed off. 
Um, but yeah, no idea when we will even hear more about it. Oh, it launched in October, so I'd imagine October. Yeah. I'd imagine uh, we'll probably uh, have another launch in October. Uh, and you bet your bottom dollar I will say something about it. <laughs> Um, and the RG Ally X, I think we're going to hear that the RG Ally launched last June. Yes. Oh, it says here June. Okay. So we will hear more about it very soon. Yeah. Um, so that's your handheld news for the week. That's the yes. handheld portion of the Wolfden podcast. Um, Tob Goob. Thanks for the prime, dude. All right, let's move on to more release stuff. Let's talk about this Epilogue SN Operator. This is a quick story because it's not a story. I, got, <laughs> I found an article, and all it was was just a link to the tweet. Right. So they just tweeted out a picture of the SN Operator. Sleek, super, and see-through SN Operator. First official images. Um, there it is. We saw, I think, back in March... They also tweeted a picture. It was not in a case, so it was just a flat PCB. Yeah. Uh, it looked like a prototype for sure. But this is it. This is just going to be just like their Game Boy uh, consoleizer cart ripper thing. Yeah. Um, it, but it'll be Super Nintendo. And I always recommend Epilogue's version the most because it's super easy to use and it plugs right into the computer and you dump your ROM or you can straight up, it comes with an emulator. So you can straight up play your Game Boy games on the computer. Mm -hmm. And I'd imagine this would be the same. So your Super Nintendo games will play right on the computer or whatever device you want to plug it into. Uh, and yeah, I guess it won't have HDMI. So it'll, you'll need a computer. Yeah, I think it's just, it's, uh, well, I'm looking at the Game Boy one. I think it's just USB. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's fine because A, I'm usually on the computer anyway. And mm. B, it's really for ripping the ROMs. Yeah. So ROMs and save files. Yeah. So if you have any emulation consoles or if you play emulators at all, I think these sorts of things are a necessity. If you have like the Save the Hero Builders Cart Ripper, you don't need something like this because that rips everything. But this is the easiest. This will be the easiest to use for sure if it's mm -hmm. anything like the Game Boy one that they. Um, so this is definitely something to look out for, and this is definitely something I will make a video on. Now they, uh, it 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 doesn't end there. They uh tweeted. Apparently, they like something leaked. Okay. Oh, they retweeted my tweet. Thank you, thank you, guys. Um, Show up. Here it is. So somebody tweeted at them, uh, the website leak from a year or so ago was right. Can't wait to buy one. 64 operator when, LOL. <laughs> that means their website yeah. leaked and their plans were, were revealed. Epilogue said, we're literally having a meeting to discuss the 64 operator PCB this week. How did you even know? <laughs> so they just straight up were like, yeah, we're making yeah. a 64 one. I mean, at least they're honest. Yeah. They're not like trying to hide it and they're not trying to shut people down for like leaking shit. Yeah. You know, the that only, I appreciate. The only thing that I don't like about this mm -hmm. is that now there are four, uh, three different devices if you want to rip N64, SNES, and Game Boy slash Game Boy Advance. Okay. Again, I think that these, I, I like Epilogue a lot and I have faith that these are going to be really good for, for, for what mm -hmm. they are. But it would be nice to pay like a hundred bucks to have one that does everything, you know? Well, I think, you know, this serves a different market than that because this is if you just want to do Game Boy or you just want to do SNES, right? Then there's just that device for you. But also, too, you, you got to think maybe they're thinking focus on one device that does one thing well rather than a device that does everything you know, maybe not as well. This way they can yeah. focus on just doing the best Game Boy Ripper they can make. So I would like to have an all-in-one. Right. But while we're talking this out, you've convinced me otherwise because <laughs> the Save the Hero Builder one does everything. It does yeah. like a lot of different stuff. Uh, that is $150 though. Yeah. And if you want to get these three, well, so, so the Game Boy is 50 bucks. Epilogue operator is 50 bucks. Yeah. I'm a, I would hope that this SN operator is also 50 bucks. 
and then if the if the N64 one's 50 bucks, that's 150 bucks right there. So that's right. not that bad of a deal. Yeah, but they I could they could get away with charging more for the N64 one, probably. Mm -hmm. but they shouldn't. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. It's not like there's going to be more material. I mean, there's going to be a little bigger. Yeah, but it shouldn't be more materials or anything. Yeah, but I feel like you know they're trying to they're trying to make a more high quality product. Yeah. So yeah, it would be more expensive to have to buy every because you know they probably won't just stop at those three. They'll probably do Genesis and. NES. I would pay two hundred dollars for an epilogue version of this Save the Hero Builders right. thing because it because it that one will also have emulators on it that work on a computer, mm -hmm. and it'll just be easier. Their their interface is really good on on mm -hmm. the computer. The, the the little uh the the little app that comes up that makes you save the stuff it, yeah. it works really well. Uh, this one the Save the Hero Builders thing it's you gotta work on a little tiny screen. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. It doesn't yeah. have the same sort of interface when you plug it into the computer. So. This is something cool to look out for. Now, the question is, when is somebody going to do something for disk-based systems? Because that seems to still be kind of a challenge. Yeah. Like, I, I know there are people who can do it, but it's not as simple as just buying one of these things. So, I... Uh, I know you tried. I tried, and it made me mess around with that app. I forgot what it was, like Media Ripper or something. Mm -hmm. And it's... you someone's got to do it it's got to yeah. be just a just a disk drive that you could plug into the computer that can rip all of the stuff yeah. because you need special i mean there's ways to do it but the way the way it should be done is uh they need to make uh a, 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 a little disk drive that's usb that can rip the weird split layer dreamcast discs that can read the the small GameCube discs, yeah. and that could read the weird uh, formatted Wii discs. There are people who buy old IDE drives specifically for ripping stuff like uh, Dreamcast, or, yeah. or, or, or I'm sorry, Wii discs. Um, so why not just make a new USB drive that works just like the old IDE, IDE drive, something yeah. that converts it or something? Um, there's got to be there's got to be a way to do an all in one like that. Yeah, I mean, I know with like a disk drive, there's more moving parts involved because like the laser yeah. has to move back and forth and the the spindle. And once, so I I know it's more complicated. And like you said, you know, Dreamcast doesn't use regular CDs; it uses GD ROMs. GameCube and Wii use proprietary media that are disc shaped, but not necessarily a CD or a DVD. Yeah, and even PlayStation, you know, the discs like a PlayStation CD has black bottom. A PS2 CD has a blue bottom, so like that's got a really advanced copper protection yeah. on that too. So, but like the the drives exist, like you could just get the drive that used to be in these consoles. Yeah. So there's got to be a way to have something that can do as much that, that has as much overlap as possible with all mm -hmm. of these different uh, types of drives. Um, Grandmaster C in the chat says, "Do we need a Wii Ripper when Wii's are quite cheap and can rip?" Uh, yeah, because not everybody wants to hack their Wii. Yeah, and also too, people would spend uh, people would rather spend a hundred, two hundred bucks on a on a drive that can just rip everything. Yeah, and like getting the software off of the Wii onto like a computer or stuff. Like, imagine if you had one little box that can just rip your entire games collection. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, and like you have like a, a Plex server somewhere, yeah. and like you can access your entire Wii library, your entire Dreamcast library. Yeah, like the goal is to get our library of games onto. The, uh, my backup drives yeah. you know like to have them all as rom so i could play them wherever i want and and, and all my save files too mm -hmm. um that's been really cool to like get my games and my saves on other devices yeah i just did it with 3ds it was fucking awesome yeah. but uh, you know you need to hack 3ds to do it all right last uh oh there's two this we're like shopping today there's like a lot of things <laughs> that you can buy that yeah. we're talking about here. Uh, this one I just put in the in the in the keep because oh, I uh, it is it's more than I thought it was. What do you mean it's more than you? Thought I thought it was, it was just the one thing, but it's a two thing. This is a two thing. It is the introducing the eight bit two retro eighteen mechanical number pad, a two in one PC number pad thing. and calculator. I thought it was just a calculator. 
Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's literally. It's a number pad and a calculator. It's literally this. Yes. This is this is what I use to switch scenes during the podcast. Yes. Sometimes I hit the wrong button. Yep. Uh, and it's literally just that. And I think it's also wireless. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, compatible with Windows and Android. The perfect uh, companion to the 850 Retro Keyboard. Available in N, uh, Fami, C64, and M editions. So... They said M edition. Everyone's like, what the hell is M edition? And M edition is uh, this new uh, Ape Adu keyboard that they have. It's like supposed to be like an IB, like an old IBM computer. Oh. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I like the way that that looks. See, I thought M, like the M30 controller, which is a Genesis controller. So it may, I thought it had something to do with that. Genesis would be cool. Yeah. So this is really cool. Uh, I like keyboards that don't have number pads because uh i'm not doing a lot of math and if i need right. to i can just use the row it's not a big deal I, i'd rather have a small uh keyboard mm-hmm. however uh i have this number pad here and it's a macro pad for switching yeah. scenes and stuff and in the other room on the other stream computer i have another macro pad that is set up to switch scenes and stuff so yeah. i end up having number pads so this is really cool and I'm assuming it will work with the Apidu software that you can then set macros to. So if you'd like to, you can set it to change scenes in OBS mm-hmm. like how I do. The way you do that is I have it. I have each key set to alt and the number. So like seven would be alt and seven. And then in OBS, you can set hotkeys and I have each scene set to alt and the number. So uh, right. that makes me change scenes and stuff. So you could... You can do that. You can have keyboard shortcuts. If you like use a lot of Photoshop or something, you can have like change your brushes or whatever. Uh, so this is really cool. And I'd imagine that this one is actually, it's on Amazon right now. Yeah, you pre-order right now, $45. 45 bucks is extremely cheap. Oh, and they show, they show you what the screen looks like. Yeah, because again, it's also a calculator. <laughs> yeah, you can straight up just use it without plugging it in, I guess. Yeah. Uh, 45 bucks is extremely cheap. This thing that I have in my hand right here. Yeah. $130. Yikes. That's ridiculous. Yikes, bikes. The one in the other room, I built it. It was like right. 20 bucks. <laughs> not, not so bad. But uh, 45 bucks, really not bad yeah. at all. Oh, it comes with a dongle, too. Yeah, I'd imagine it's... Well, yeah, it's Bluetooth, can... uh, 2.4 gigahertz, and wired. You can use it as. Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz, and wired, yeah. Just like the uh, keyboard is. Yeah. Keyboard is, is like... And that's what I, this one that I have in my hands, I have it uh, set to Bluetooth. It's just Bluetooth connected. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really cool. Good job, Apid. Oh, hello, Nerd Nest. Nerd Nest is uh, YouTube. Oh, how you doing? Hey. Uh, what else? We also have a thank you to Kyo Terusanti. Thank you for the Prime. And the Konami Man, thank you for the 18 months. Hey, happy. Pod Day Wolf Bros. Also, I picked up a second MiU Mini Plus this week for four dollars. God damn! That seems like a good How deal. How the hell did you do that? Is that a Temu situation? Sounds like it might be a Temu situation. Christ. Uh, all right. The last little thing of shopping. Lego is making a Zelda set. Yes, finally, you nerds get what you wanted. <laughs> uh, the rumors are true. Lego is finally making a Legend of Zelda set. The Great Deku Tree 2-in-1 includes 2,500 pieces and is available for pre-order now for $300 and will start shipping out in September. The set covers two different Zelda games, Ocarina of Time and Breath of the Wild, letting you build the Great Deku Tree in green summer foliage or pink spring cherry blossoms. It features several versions of Link, including Link as a child and Link as an adult from Ocarina of Time's Green Hero of Time tunic and Link in Breath of the Wild's Blue Champion tunic. According to Lego, the Great Deku Tree uh, set will have interactive features, including the ability to animate the tree's facial expressions. The set also includes a Skulltulla, uh, Koroks, uh, Hestu waving his signature maracas, fairies, and Princess Zelda herself. Three... Links and one Zelda. Yeah. That's, I do really like how it's both Breath of the Wild and Ocarina. That, that is cool. That is really cool. Yeah. I, I didn't even know that the Deku Tree was in 
Breath of the Wild. Neither did I. <laughs> I, had I no honestly, idea. I just, no idea. I just, I didn't see the Ocarina. I beat the whole game. <laughs> I didn't see the Ocarina time links at first. I just thought they used the Breath of the Wild links because that's like the modern look for Link, and mm -hmm. that's Nintendo saying this is what he looks like. I didn't know that there was like a whole. Thing. I only got the gist because of the Sakura leaves on the Deku tree, and I was like, that wasn't in. That's yeah. definitely not a Ocarina of Time. And, thing. and like a friend of mine told me it was a two in one. But I just assumed that meant like it opens up because like some of the Harry Potter ones stuff from like the adult collector Lego set, like they open up and it's like a whole other like diorama. Mm -hmm. So like that's what I thought it was. And I, you know, I know insane people are going to buy two of these to like do both. Someone in the chat uh, said 20 bucks says that Wood buys two of them. Yes, Wood is an insane person, <laughs> so he would buy two of them. This did, did we say the price? Because it is three hundred dollars. Yeah, that is expensive. Lego has always been expensive. Yeah, and now that they have these like black box, like serious adult collector ones, they're getting even more expensive. They make the sickest Batman Lego sets out there, but they cost as much as a Steam Deck. <laughs> Also, where are you going to put it? Exactly. Got nowhere to put it. And I got shit. two kids who don't know how to treat things with respect. So that thing will be shattered into a million pieces. Yes. Uh, I will not be getting one. No. I still have uh, uh, the, the NES TV that I never put together. I was going to say, like you, did, you got the NES one. You built half of it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. So that's we're done shopping today. Yes. It's time for... Backlog! 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 Guys, welcome to the Backlog. What's the Backlog? The Backlog is a segment of this show where we go through our entire game collection. Every game we've ever bought gets put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick a game at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. We're up to nine what now? 900 and uh 959 we got some crap from uh our, our buddy jake about how we don't have enough games yeah he's got i forgot what he said he had he's got like <laughs> well over a thousand maybe like close to two thousand uh you know what i agree we should have more games yeah <laughs> he's also <laughs> counting like you know every game in his uh nes classic and like we have taken some out yeah, we've like tried to like call it because there was a lot of like crap and also oh, I'm not in counting all the games that come on my little handheld. You exactly, know, like yeah, we, we had mobile games for a time. We had to get yeah. rid of those because that's just too much. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm missing a lot of my Switch games. Anyway, yeah, we're up to 169, baby. 169, nice. Uh, Fruit Ninja on the iPhone. There you go. What a the fuck? I thought we got game. rid of mobile no, games. No, we didn't get rid of all the mobile games. Okay. I got rid of the ones that like I haven't even put like even twenty seconds in. But like okay. Fruit Ninja. Fruit Ninja's big everybody's deal. Everybody's played Fruit Ninja. Fruit Ninja rules. <laughs> it's I'll, such I'll a, allow it. I'll allow Fruit Ninja. It's such a simple game. It's a classic game. It's an iconic game. You're a ninja and you slice up fruit. I don't remember it looking like this. Yeah, that's the thing. Like Fruit Ninja was like one of the early iPhone games that were like was like really very popular. very early in the beginning. Yeah, uh, it's one of the one of those games that like blew up along with like Angry Birds they, and cut the rope. They gotchified this game. This yeah, gameplay is from Neo Gaming. It's from five years ago. Oh Jesus! Uh, but man, it did not look like this when I no. played it. It was literally just the game opens and you're cutting fruit. Yeah. This is you got a guy talking to you. You got dialogue trees. Yeah. You got uh, it, that's really just a tutorial. It's not a dialogue tree, but it looks like there's like it looks like a mobile game now. Yeah, it looks like a modern mobile game where they want you to, you know, buy spins or whatever. yeah. Which this which, is the game that yeah. I know, and it's this is a really good like use of a phone, a smartphone gameplay because like you just see fruit come up and you just swipe at it with your finger. It seems simple enough. Anybody can do oh, it. But then you get a bomb. But then you, and you get can't bombs thrown in. And then they throw lots of fruit at you. And you have to slice up all the fruit. You can't really miss any fruit. And you have to avoid the bombs while you do it. So it's one of those good types of puzzle games where it starts off easy, but then slowly and slowly like gets harder and harder and harder. And you have to perfect your techniques and like try to avoid all the obstacles that are in there. It's fun. It's a good time. It's a nice distraction. It's what a cell phone game honestly should be. It's uh extremely simple but it was a great Ooh, i've never seen that before oh I've, I've seen those 
the the multi hits. Okay, I didn't that's know it's zoomed in like that. Because you just go all out on your phone. You just go fucking yeah. So this was a great showcase of how games could work well on an iPhone touch screen. Yes, this, this is this is clearly to showcase the how a touch screen worked. Because yeah. even back in the day when iPhones were uh, new. Uh, people kind of didn't like touchscreens. Yeah. Because at the time, you had the, the, the popular touchscreens you had were like the DS, and using yeah. that with your finger sucked. Mm -hmm. That's why I came with a stylus. Uh, but iPhone kind of nailed it, and uh, people were... I was one of them. I did not want a touchscreen keyboard. Yeah. I, I was like, I need a physical keyboard. Uh, but then I got used to it, just right. like everybody else. And I and I think with a game like Fruit Ninja, you know, it designed its gameplay around the touchscreen. Yeah. To this day, we see so many games trying to like emulate the console style of gameplay on a touchscreen with, you know, virtual buttons and whatnot. And it just doesn't work the same way. Whereas this is a game that actually uses the hardware to its advantage. Yeah, I think having I I think we like mobile games. Yeah. Well, some people think that mobile games aren't games. I think that mobile games are just fine. They just yeah. have to be good at home <laughs> on a mobile platform. Yeah. Like just having controller buttons usually doesn't like touch screen controller buttons usually doesn't work. This only works because uh you swipe your finger on a touch screen. Yeah. This would only work on a touch screen. This would not work on a console. Well, funny you say that cuz apparently there's a PS4 version. Yes, four. Four. Ah, touchpad. It touchpad, but like the whole <laughs> thing is like you you swipe at the fruit that you see. And like you can see the fruit on the screen, so you hit it with your finger. But like you you don't see the fruit on your VR. It's a VR game. Oh, it's a VR game? Oh, never mind. <laughs> that, I mean that makes sense. It does. It's it, like there's a also more sense. arcade versions. There's of arcade the game, versions, which yeah. is just a giant touch screen. Yeah. There's a Connect version for the Xbox 360. It's probably the same. As this probably one. the same as that. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about adapting uh, controls to a touch screen. Mm -hmm. A game that I think does it really well is uh, Downwell. Yeah, because that's already vertical. Mm -hmm. It's a vertical game, and it only has left, right, and one button. And touch screens only work if there's only two buttons that you press at one time. Mm -hmm. And having three buttons total is like the most that you can get away with. Yeah, that works really well. Uh, this works well because again, you're swiping, and that's what you do on an iPhone. You yeah. swipe. So th th they were like. I'm gonna swipe on this thing. We're gonna make a whole game around it. Yeah. And there's other, you know, games that I think are at home on a touch screen. I think like, you know, like the old like Lucas Arts type of like uh point and click games. Yeah. Those yeah. Are, I would rather play those on a touch screen than on a console with a controller. Yeah. You know. Uh. So. Classic, classic iPhone yes. game we have here, Fruit Ninja. I don't know if I would recommend it now. It looks like uh. It looks like they they did some shit to it. Yeah, I don't. God, I haven't. I honestly haven't played this game in a long time. It came out in 2010, so it's a 14 year old game. Of, uh, I definitely played this on my 2010. 2010. When did I get an iPhone 3G? I got it when it 2009, came out, right? Really? Yeah. That late? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely played this on my iPhone 3G. Yeah. So back then it was great. Yeah. Uh, and I, like, honestly, like if you were to get it now, I'm sure there's still fun to be had with it, but just be prepared to like dodge get ads some, and microtransactions yeah. and which stinks because that's what like all iPhone games seem to be nowadays. Hold up. Yes. Hold up. We, their new development. I'm listening. I looked it up on the, uh, on the, I, at the Apple store yeah the whatever app store. it's called now the app store uh you got fruit ninja yes r with the little you know the copyright symbol yeah then you have fruit ninja classic different game <laughs> then you have fruit ninja 2 there's a sequel yes never knew that with a, <laughs> this time is personal so what the hell's fruit ninja classic i don't know apparently i have downloaded both fruit ninja and fruit ninja classic because i got the little cloud symbol there mine just says get Get means you haven't ever downloaded it. Really? But get means it's free. Free to play, yeah, I they're should all, say. Yeah, they're all free to play. Yeah. And they all say in-app purchase. I definitely 
had th I definitely played these. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I had a different counter. What is the difference between Fruit Ninja and Fruit Ninja Classic? Actually, I gotta be honest. Fruit Ninja Classic looks like, but now I'm now I'm. It's taking me back. Right. This is the menu that I remember. It's literally just play the game or yeah. don't play the game. Oh, right, so under Fruit Ninja Classic, mm -hmm. the uh, in-game purchases are Half Brick, which is the company that made it. It's like a subscription to their like membership or whatever. Like, what is that? Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah, this is more like I remember. And honestly, this looks uh, worse <laughs> than the, 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 the new version. So I don't know. What are we? Ca are we calling this the backlog for Fruit Ninja Classic? Because that's the one that we had, but they kind of re-released it and renamed it. Let's just say it's the backlog episode for Fruit Ninja and let you decide which one See, it is. I remember the little old guy. Yeah. That's this is the Fruit Ninja I remember. Right. Anyway, thanks for watching the backlog everybody. <laughs> Check out Fruit Ninja. <laughs> it it's fun. It's fun it's game. It's fun. Fun game. There's yeah. a million games like it now. I yeah. Think. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey, you should come to a podcast every once in a while over on youtube.com slash wolfden podcast. Um, bye. Bye. Not you podcast listeners. You yeah, stay. you're stuck with us. Um, next news. We're going to talk about Atari owning in television. Yes. The first console war is officially over. Uh, Second versus Nintendo, PlayStation versus Xbox. The gaming industry has been full of competition for decades now. Uh, however, one of the original console wars has finally come to an end roughly 45 years after either company's gaming system were relevant. Atari has announced that it has acquired the Intellivision brand along with certain games, quote, uh, in quotes, from Intellivision Entertainment LLC. Uh, uniting Atari and Intellivision after 45 years ends the longest running console war in history, said Mike Micah. Uh, studio head at the Atari-owned Digital Eclipse Game Studio in a statement. Uh, while it's unclear what exactly uh, Atari has planned for Intellivision, uh, it has announced its first project, a line of t-shirts available at yeah. Atari.com. The Intellivision was a console uh, released in 1979 by Mattel Electronics and posed as the first serious threat to the popular gaming console at the time, the Atari 2600. Mattel came out swinging at Atari in a way previous competitors had not. The company created a series of commercials and advertisements starring writer George Plimpton. Uh, um, the ads featured Plimpton comparing the two gaming consoles and promoting Intellivision superior graphics and sound over Atari's console. Mattel sold out of Intellivision consoles within a year. By 1990, around 5 million Intellivision consoles had been sold. Eventually, however, both Atari and Intellivision would lose their positions atop the video game console market. Despite this, uh, continue, uh, despite this, both continued to take advantage of their intellectual properties and license their games to other companies like Nintendo and Sony. Atari's announcement doesn't give many details in terms of what it has planned for Intellivision. However, nostalgia within the gaming world continues to run strong, so it's likely that Atari plans to take advantage of Intellivision's game history. Uh, one interesting detail that uh, was included in Atari's announcement is that it had not acquired Intellivision Entertainment LLC's Amico brand God game console. damn it. The, con <laughs> the Amico console, I was... God damn it. You knew this was coming. <laughs> Uh, the Amico console was announced in 2018 after video game music composer and known charlatan Tommy Tellerico <laughs> bought a stake in Intellivision and announced the company was planning to relaunch the Intellivision console. Eventually renamed Amico, the console was promoted as a simple game console that would target non-gamers and families. A 2020 target release date was set. However, the Amico experienced various delays. As of 2024, the Yumiko has still not been released and appears Atari has no interest in acquiring it. According to Atari's announcement, Television Entertainment LLC will rebrand itself and continue to pursue the Amico gaming console. In fact, Atari also shared that part of the as part of the deal, Amico will have a license to distribute new Intellivision games for the system. In late 2023, it was reported that the company then known as Intellivision was facing financial difficulties uh, in producing Amico units and seeking funding. It appears that the sale of the Intellivision brand to Atari may have been made to fund the Amico. So based on all of that, we can deduce that Atari is planning to release new games based on its newly acquired Intellivision brand and that the Amico console is still alive for now. 
So does that mean if the Amico releases, they have to pay licensing to Atari? I mean, I don't know. Part of all it says is that part of the deal is uh, Amico will have a license to distribute new and television games for their system. It doesn't. It doesn't necessarily say that they're gonna have to pay Atari. I'm sure somewhere in the deal they weaseled their way out of having to pay Atari because they're so in debt and yeah. don't have any money. <laughs> Like, this is their Hail Mary, Hail Mary pass to get that stupid system out the door. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, badly, like, like in television and Atari were fighting each other for, for dominance in the mm-hmm. space, and then both of them just threw it all, yeah. <laughs> all away throughout the years. They both could not hold on to any uh, sort of relevance. Yeah, and it's been like this weird, like roller coaster for both companies. Like Atari, like the Atari of today is nowhere near what uh, really related to the Atari of yesteryear. Yeah, somebody just really bought the name and like made a new company out of the ashes of Atari. Yeah, that's happened like three or four times, I must say. And Intellivision was owned by the original developer of Intellivision, before, you know, after they left Mattel, and then. Tommy came over, bought the rights to it after the original creator died, and then ran that ship into the iceberg over and over again. Now, what does Intellivision even have? Like, what games? Like, why I'd am be I hard buying an Amico? To, I'd be hard pressed to tell you like what like an Intellivision exclusive is. The thing is, like, that's the thing with the Intellivision. Like, the games on their own don't mean shit. The yeah. games together is what's valuable. Well, it seems like a, s- a lot of Intellivision games are just on other consoles. Yeah. Burger time. Right. Yeah. You know, like, well, I'm saying like the a television exclusive titles, like you're not going to buy like one Intellivision game. You're going to buy a bundle. Well, that's of television. Yeah. Games. And, and Atari kind of took the same model. They're, yeah. They're re-releasing all of their games over and over and over again as a, yeah. as a big bundle. Well, to Atari's credit, the, the 50th anniversary collection they put out last year or whenever it was, was really well received. Yeah. And people genuinely seem to like their approach to it. If they can do something like that with Intellivision, I think that would be like a big success for them. And they can just promote themselves like that way, you know, yeah, being like a, a living museum to these old video games. My big question is how do you have a collection like that and fall into irrelevance so quickly? <laughs> like <laughs> after like from the littlest push back from Nintendo and Sega at the time, like how do you Well, not I think, you know, part of it was leverage because your library. You know, they 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 crashed and burned because they oversaturated the market. That's what led to the video game crash of 1983. So, you know, nowadays, like, we know that, be- I, I say we know better, We're, everything's pointing to another video game crash, like, yeah. soonish. But, like, times have changed. They had a hard time adapting to, you know, the modern era of gaming. Atari tried they, with the Lynx and the Jaguar, and that, we saw how that went. Yeah. But, yeah. They had no games. Like, yeah. like. They have all now. They have all of these licenses that are pretty iconic, like like asteroids and, and asteroids. Yars Revenge. Then we got a new <laughs> Yars like, game. But out. like all these other companies, they have these iconic franchises and they do cool new things with it. Yeah, and they do some dumb new things with it, but they mm-hmm. correct. And Atari just never did. Yeah, they just like here's the same fucking game a thousand times. Yeah, I mean in television, at least up until recently, like they they would you know, release classic collections of their stuff. But like, I think they knew what their audience wanted. They didn't necessarily want a new version of a television game. They just want an easier way to play their television. Right. So anyway, uh, there you go. That's that. Yeah. That's Atari. Uh, LJ in the chat says Atari won't have to worry about royalties for Amico sales. That thing won't ever release. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk about freaking Black Ops. Yep. Let's talk about the same thing over and over again. Uh, let's talk. Let's do the reveal first. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's open that. 
Black Ops 6, the latest first-person shooter to roll along the Call of Duty conveyor belt, has graced us with another teaser trailer. Like the first teaser we dropped last week, the video is comprised mostly of live-action footage, but there does appear to be at least one tiny snippet of gameplay footage in there, and it suggests that uh, we're in for a pretty weird time. Uh, titled Open Your Eyes, the trailer is mostly comprised of VHS archive clips with various early 90s artifacts, including Bill Clinton playing the saxophone and an advert for the Chia Pet, uh, not to be confused with uh, the Chica from Breath of the Wild, uh, all while a distorted male voice talks over, uh, talks to the viewer directly. It's clearly going for an analog horror vibe with a uh, willfully grainy footage and rapid cuts to more psychedelic imagery. Uh, there was a, they posted a full on trailer today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think I put this in the keep before the new trailer dropped. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a new trailer. There's a new Let's trailer, the, the, which the actually new... shows. Yeah, it doesn't show any gameplay or anything. No, but it shows uh, Bill Clinton, George H. W. Bush, Margaret Thatcher, and Colin Powell, I think. Colin Powell and Saddam Hussein talking to you. About... Wait, it shows Saddam Hussein. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, at the end. I didn't see that. There's definitely. <laughs> oh no, I did see that. I did see that. So these are early '90s. I, conf- I just confused Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden in my brain. <laughs> I confused the two. <laughs> Uh, so these we're are we're getting all, there though. 9 is gonna be in here. Mark my words. I don't know because these are all like early nineties figures. There, it's the red herring. They're throwing you <laughs> off. They're gonna lead up to that, and that's okay. gonna be their uh big controversial moment in the game because every Call of Duty game needs to have a big controversial big, yeah. moment. I mean, like, God, like I the other Call of Duty games were one thing because like, you know, I didn't grow up with Kennedy or Reagan or any of those people, so it's all like you know, ancient history to me. Yeah. I remember the Clinton years and the yeah. first Bush years. The and- first trailer, the first teaser where they're showing commercials. I yeah. watched those commercials on TV. So yeah. That it, it so was like, interesting. It, like, again, like, you know, maybe it's one thing if like, you know, you, how do I go to, how do I put this? The farther removed from history, we are, I guess, the more desensitized to it we are. Because, like, I don't real, I don't have any, like... I wasn't born during the Vietnam War. It looks like I was, but I'm not. <laughs> uh, so I have no, like, memory or, like, rec- or point of reference to it. So it's all just history to me. I'm completely disconnected from it. Yeah. So I can play a video game and experience basically ancient history. This is all stuff I lived through. So this is all stuff I have context for. Yeah. So it's... It's going to be, and I'm sure most people who play video games have more context for this than they do like the Vietnam War. It, or World it War makes II me or really interested in it. It makes me want to play it. it and I have, not, I have not played a single player Call of Duty in fucking forever. The thing is, like, it's interesting, but at the same time, like, this is Call of Duty we're talking about here. They're not exactly known for subtlety and nuance. So, like, I don't necessarily trust them to, like, make the right kind of modern military history type of game no it, it's know? but it's stuff you're familiar with and that you're interested in and it'll be a weird bastardization of it and that's yeah. still interesting it's <laughs> kind of like yeah. when assassin's creed did america and mm-hmm. then george washington is like a tyrant and shit it's mm-hmm. like that's cool though like i want to see that yeah except i didn't live through that time yeah but you know whatever so it's disappointing to not see any gameplay and yeah. uh it's also interesting because this is a story trailer and people don't play the campaigns for fucking Call of Duty games. People want to see the multiplayer. Uh, I, I don't know if that's true. I think people do play the single player campaign of Call of Duty. People like the single player camp Call of Duty. A lot of people use not it lately. as training for... Well, yeah, not lately because they've all been bad. Modern Warfare... Was there even one for Modern Warfare 2? Single player? Yeah. Yeah. Which one didn't have a single player? Black Ops 4. Was that it? I thought there was a bu- no, uh, was I thought there was a couple that didn't have no, a single Black player. Ops 4 was the only one that didn't have a single player. Warfare 3 barely had a single player. It was like Modern six- Warfare 3. Yeah, Modern Warfare. The well, new Modern Warfare 3. Well, because remember, Modern Warfare 3, the most recent one, was supposed to be an expansion pack for Modern Warfare mm-hmm. 2 until, you know, notable idiot Bobby Kodak said, it's going to be a full release game. Yeah. Do it in three months. So is this You're game- all fired. Is this game coming out this year? This is the game that's coming out this year. A little disappointing. I would, I would have hoped that they would have taken a little bit of time. Yeah. Well, like we keep hearing, like uh, next well, year they're going to take a year off. This was probably in development for a while because yeah. this is uh, Treyarch. Yes. 
Every year they talk about they're going to take a year off, and every year it's like, oh, here's Call of Duty game. It is Treyarch. It's yeah. also every other Activision developer. Yeah. Uh, but they've probably been working on it for a while. Yeah. Slash Treyarch. Game. I think they're saving gameplay reveal to like the Xbox showcase, which is soon, isn't yeah. it? June eighth. Oh yeah, all the E three stuff. Yeah. Is, is uh next weekend kind of. Yeah. Damn. God damn. Uh, I'm looking at uh Treyarch releases ah they i mean they, here's the thing though they work on all of the call of duty games yeah so it's hard to tell mm -hmm. what they actually did maybe yeah i don't know yeah but i, I, I don't know i hope they spent a lot of time on it and uh i don't love the multiplayer with black ops games uh i'm sure that there'll be some integration with warzone and i like that so I don't, yeah. I don't know but uh at least i'm interested in the single player yeah all right uh oh but there's a lot of news out of this uh one i don't know if it's here but maybe i should we'll we'll, we'll talk about it will be on last gen consoles apparently. yes uh Insider Gaming has been able to verify with multiple sources that the uh, image uh, showing uh, PS4, PS5, and Xbox Series X consoles is legit, uh, and that Black Ops 6 will be coming to past generation consoles. As for why the image does not feature the Xbox One version, it is understood that the Series X and S version is a cross-gen version, meaning it will also work on the Xbox One. That's awesome. Insider Gaming first learned uh, that a Cerberus, which was the codename for Black Ops 6, was being development for past generation consoles in February of last year, wasn't able to confirm whether this was final. However, after speaking with several GameStop employees and developers of the game, we can now confirm that it is real. So, uh, I'd imagine this game was in development for a while, uh, mm -hmm. so it would make sense for it to work for older platforms. Uh, it being cross-gen for Xbox is awesome because it is now a first-party yeah. Xbox game, so I'd imagine that integration is easy. Maybe yeah. if they weren't first-party Xbox, there would be some weird pay thing to upgrade to the newer yeah. console oh, version. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but that's really cool. Uh, I can't imagine it running good on older platforms because the new Call, call of Duty is... If you're looking at like a graph of the most popular games and the least optimized games, Call of Duty's up there. Yeah. It, it, it runs pretty poorly on a lot of uh, 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 computers. So uh, I can't imagine it running good on an older mm -hmm. platform also it's gonna be a lot of storage it's gonna take up a lot of storage space it's gonna yeah. be like over 100 gigabytes. oh yeah so uh your p your poor ps4 is not gonna be able to, yeah. to hold it probably um but the big news is that it's uh going to be on game Pass. it was confirmed to uh, be going on game pass day one in uh, quotes in, yeah in, in day one they yeah. say uh, this was like rumored and leaked uh, last week, and I think we know we reported on it because like there was debate as to whether or not they would put Black Ops Six on Game Pass, and now here we are with confirmation it will be quote unquote day one release on Game Pass. Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. I think this is going to be uh, it's going to release three days early. There's going to there's going to be some bullshit where they're gonna, like pay fifty bucks to play it early. Yeah, I'm going to say. That two to three days early mm -hmm. probably three days early it'll probably be it'll probably release on a friday and on you can play it on tuesday if you pay yeah uh for the premium version mm -hmm. or something uh for for sure uh which is bullshit and we shouldn't stand for that yeah write your congressman uh sir griff sir in the chat says <laughs> do console versions of cod run at 60 frames per second or 100 plus like on pc so I haven't played a console version of Call of Duty in a really long time. Uh, Cold War ran. You can you can on a PS5. You can um, uh, change the mode to run at a high frame rate. Yeah. I, th I think the resolution is just a little lower, but it still looks good. Uh, I'd imagine Warzone's the, the same way. I was playing Warzone at over a hundred frames per second on an Xbox uh, uh, One X, I think. Yeah. Oh, and to see when I got when I got the Xbox Series and the PS5, uh, I played uh, Warzone on them, and I was getting over 100 frames per second. I think in 4K. So uh, yeah, they they Call of Duty games should run over 100 frames. You might just have to lower the resolution a little bit. Yeah. 
they're actually pretty good in that way they they there's like i think there's also like variable refresh rate and shit but i'm just saying like it doesn't reach full 120 frames per second and 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 stuff like that mm -hmm. at full 4k or whatever uh six six that's in the youtube chat so you know it's gonna be good <laughs> says do either of you play drums and have either of you teabagged your brother's drum set let's let will answer this one <laughs> i have not i have never teabagged your drum set just so i have you know. had people teabag my drum set <laughs> that has happened before but not me um Rowlers and games. Thank you for gifting a sub. Uh, At what part do you... Bass drum. The bass drum. Yeah, the bass drum. You beg the bass drum. Or just on one of the skins. Okay. Good. Skin to skin. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I got a drum pad in the other room now. I have my snare in the other room. Yeah. If you want to... Now's the time. Cause now I'm th yeah, because I'm thinking like you could tee back the snare easily or the drum seat. Bass drum. You but... When you're playing, there's... Something between your legs yeah. all the time. You know, the bass drum, depending on how big it is, and if you got the, the toms on it, you know, that can get in the way. Uh, you could do, you be could do easy to... All right, anyway. Uh... Oh, yeah, the Rainbow Six Siege kerfuffle. Yeah, talk about uh, dumb things. Rainbow Six Siege has been an ongoing success for Ubisoft for nearly a decade now and shows no signs of slowing down. It was just in March, in fact, that the game set an all-new concurrent player record on Steam with more than 201,000 players. Uh, but not everyone is thrilled ugh, with... Excuse me, I'm, this is making me sick. Thrilled, <laughs> not everyone is thrilled with the weekend announcement of a new subscription service for Siege called uh, R6 Membership, which promises exclusive content drops, animated skins, and premium battle pass access for $10 a month. Siege's upcoming Year 9 Season 2 will feature a complete remaster of the, uh, of the Recruit, the game's original operator, uh, which will get a new look and a new attacker and defender archetypes that will enable two different targets to be selected depending on a uh, chosen role. Uh, in lieu of a new operator, premium battle pass owners will get a voucher that can be redeemed for any operator currently in the lineup, uh, those who already own all operators in Rainbow Six Siege will instead be given 600 R6 credits. The update will also nerf the defender, uh, the defenders uh, Fenrin and Solus, uh, who were too strong in matches and demand uh, significant attention from attackers. The number of Fnat dead, uh, Fnat dread mines of Fenrir. Wow! Uh, uh, fuck this. Uh, can carry has been reduced to four, so there's no, so they're no longer bulletproof. While the duration and range of Solus's spec IO sensor has been reduced, uh, not new, the spec IO sensor. Yeah, the endless drill mode uh, will give players the opportunity to improve their abilities without being mercilessly pounded by other humans. And of course, there's a range of other updates, tweaks, and changes in the pipeline. But it's the addition of the R6 membership that has some players unhappy for $10 a month or $80 for an annual sign-up. Subscribers get a continuous stream of premium content that keeps your ops equipped with the best, exclu best exclusive gear. Monthly content drops will include a time-limited legendary item, sometimes animated for extra flair, and an epic operator bundle along with uh, mostly cosmetic Bravo packs and full access to the premium battle pass with 10, with, uh, 10 level skips. I'm not that familiar with Rainbow Six. Mm -hmm. I know that th at there. I saw the clip at a tournament. There, there was a Rainbow Six tournament, and they announced all of the stuff. And the crowd was, I think they were chanting "fuck you, Ubisoft." <laughs> there were boos. There were boos, but they started chanting yeah. something too, um, because that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, having a, a subscription to a game like this that has been free, yeah, is ridiculous. Uh, what do you get? Does it give you any? I mean, you get the operators, so I guess that's an advantage. But it, it's a continuous stream of premium content that keeps your ops equipped with the best exclusive gear. That's the thing: is the best exclusive gear. What does that mean? Yeah, because I, you know, in a lot of other games, it's just cosmetic stuff. Yeah, uh, I think I see people comparing it to the Fortnite uh, crew memberships. Uh, the difference is Fortnite is a free to play game. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege is not free to play. It is now. It is now. <laughs> I believe so. Because that, that, 
I mean, but it wasn't originally, and I think a lot of no, people who wasn't. play this like are still. So it wasn't, and then it was, and maybe it's not anymore. It's no, not. it's not. It's uh, not. It's on sale right now for eight dollars on Steam, but uh, that is sixty uh, percent off. It is a twenty dollar game right now. You know, you know why I think. Uh... You know why I think it? You know why I thought it was free to play? It's because it's on. Uh, it was on Game Pass. Yeah. I don't know if it's still on Game Pass, but I remember playing it on Game Pass. Uh, I also bought it for PlayStation. Uh, when it came out, yeah. and I hated it when it came out because it is not like a Rainbow Six game. Yeah. And I loved my terrorist hunt in Rainbow mm-hmm. Six and everything. Uh, but it's gotten a lot better. I tried to dabble into it, and all my friends hated it, but I kind of liked it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm confused by uh. Their little subscription model trying to weasel money out of people. Yeah. People who play competitive games like this, they just want cool skins and they'll yeah. pay a lot of money for a cool skin. So nobody seems to have a problem. Like yeah. with Valorant charging $50 for a skin of a knife. Yeah. $50. But if it's cool enough, I'm throwing you $50. That's yeah. a free to play game. Rainbow Six Siege has been out for a really long time. Yeah. So they need to make some money on it do they though i mean it's been out for a really long time and they've proven they've been successful without this monthly subscription i mean they're running out they're running they're gonna run out of money eventually people keep playing it not no one no not acquiring new players so then you make a new game (laughs) yeah they should make a new game they should make a rainbow six game this is not a rainbow six right (laughs) this is a completely different i'm mad that they called this rainbow six yeah because now the next rainbow six game people will expect this yeah and i want traditional rainbow six right anyway uh what's this bullshit uh ai is important to gen z and gen alpha gamers yeah all you Zoomers out there, you're the reason why games suck now. <laughs> Developing artificial intelligence for use in video games is important to Gen Z and Gen Alpha gamers who seek personalized, personalization across everything. According to a PlayStation executive, the most in-touch people with the use, corporate executives. <laughs> in an interview with parent company Sony, head of PlayStation Productions and head of product at PlayStation Studios, Asad uh, Quizzlebash. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? That's that's how I'm pronouncing it. Um, Ooh, that's how that's how yeah. it's written. Uh, weighed in on the controversial topic of AI within video games, he noted uh, its development would allow for more personalized experiences in games, which is particularly of importance to Gen Z, uh, those born from 1997 to 2011, and Gen Alpha, those born from 2010 to 2024. Uh, advancements in AI will create. Uh, Advances in AI will create more personalized experiences for meaningful stories for consumers, uh, Quizzlebash said. Uh, for instance, non-player characters in games would uh, could interact with players based on their actions, making it feel more personal. Uh, this is important for the younger Gen Z and Gen Alpha audiences, who are the first generation that grew up digitally and are looking for personalization across everything, uh, as as well as looking for experiences to have more meaning. Video games have an endure- have endured a particularly complicated relationship with AI since its reemergence in the past couple of years, and the debate will likely only grow larger and more complex in the coming years as companies like Sony look to uh, look even further ahead. Embark Studios, the, co- the developer behind the Smash shooter, The Finals, uh, was criticized for using AI voiceovers by a myriad of actors and even other developers, for example. But Embark told IGN, making games without actors isn't an end goal and claimed it used a mix of both recorded audio voices and audio generated via AI text-to-speech tools for its games. Video game voice actors have also been called out. Uh, have also called out AI-generated explosive Skyrim mods and Assassin's Creed Syndicate's voice actress, Victoria Atkin, called AI-generated mods the invisible enemy we're fighting right now uh, after discovering her voice was used uh, by cloning software. Paul Eiding, the voice actor behind Colonel Campbell and Metal Gear Solid series, also condemned its use. That's interesting because he's literally an AI. He played an AI, he played an AI. too, yeah. So this is weird because uh first of all uh we used to call npcs in games ai like like yeah, the, when you're the, fighting against the a, pro the program yeah the, the line of code that controlled what the npcs did was called ai 
Yeah, we yeah. would be like, like, like during like the X Xbox 360 era, we'd be like, oh, the AI is bad. Like what they, the way they react to us, yeah, uh, is good or bad yeah. in different games. Enemy AI can adapt to how you're attacking them, or enemy AI is bad because it it just runs into a wall and stuff. Yeah. You know, I just we're in a. It's really interesting right now to see all of this because it's definitely just a buzzword. Yeah, because 100%. it's existed before in, in turn like a we, lot of we these, talk about it like how they react to you in games a lot of tech companies are just taking like things that already exist and rebranding it as ai yeah and you know? and it's it sucks because there's a lot of people who hear ai and they're immediately averse to it i'm immediately averse to it yeah because but i know of like all the bad stigma that comes with ai there there is definitely people doing bad shit with ai right yeah. now but people are also just calling things ai that just aren't yeah <laughs> so like it's not like everything ai is bad it's just sometimes uh, uh they just call things ai that aren't ai yeah. it's just a buzzword that people are using to to because they think it's the next new thing. It's it's just like NFTs. Yeah. It's the it's uh, very 100%, similar. 100%. Yeah. Now all those NFT bros are doing AI shit yeah. because they're trying to get uh, money for people who don't know any better. Yeah. So they'll invest in my company. Yeah. Facebook pitted, uh, pivoted from the metaverse to AI. And, you know, that's your clearest example of it. It's a little disappointing because there's all that new stuff coming out with the ARM uh processors the, yeah. the windows arm processors and they're all being pitched along with microsoft copilot which is their ai yeah. stuff and it's like i'm interested in the arm processor shit mm -hmm. i don't care at all about yeah. the, the the ai stuff well even now the new macbooks the m4 processor that they just announced like they specifically said it was like created for ai accelerate yeah you know yeah i, I have yet to see any apple ai anything like, yeah like the siri is still pretty terrible yeah <laughs> but uh again there's a lot of things that people are saying that are ai that aren't like i was watching uh uh what's his name uh coffeezilla had a video on the little rabbit, rabbit AI yeah, thing, yeah and he said that um when you ask it to play a song it will just play the beatles yeah it doesn't randomly select the song it just plays the beatles and they discovered that there's a line of code that says if play song equals beatles yeah so that's not an AI yeah, trying that's to not figure an AI. it out. That's, that's a script. That's yeah. like a, a code script. I've said this yeah. before on the show, but somebody, I was talking to somebody about how I have this podcast set up and they said, oh, you use AI to, to, to switch the cameras? Yeah. It's an if statement that says, yeah. if this mic on, go to this camera. Yeah. And that's not AI. That's yeah. just a script. Um, AI, in my definition, AI needs to learn and adapt yeah. and change based on uh, input that you give it. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just a dumb, this is a dumb script. Yeah. It's just a dumb switching script. So in terms of video games, I think if you asked, like, you know, me, little old me playing Xbox 360 games, mm -hmm. if you asked what I think the evolution of artificial intelligence is, I would say that in a game you would be able to say whatever you want to a to an npc and they would be be able to respond based on what you said yeah and that is i think what they're trying to do with ai like with the finals yeah and stuff but you have uh the uh sag unions writing new uh stuff for ai actors right and they just need to follow that there's yeah. guidelines in place. Well, I follow, think because that's gonna be the future. Well, I think what Quizzle Bash was getting at was less about like on the actor side and more about on like the tech side, like using more advanced artificial intelligence programs to control the not only the NPCs but like of uh, how like the like in a game like Battle Battlefield, where, like the destruction that happens all around yeah. you, like things you do to the world like have lasting impact and stuff, but. I I understand like where like actors and like writers can get scared because it starts off with using AI for that and then you yeah. use AI for you know the actors and you use AI to generate the story and you use AI for you know slowly and slowly it takes over more and more roles. Yeah. So it winds up being just a dude hitting a button that generates a whole game. Yeah, there needs to be sorts of regulations around it. Yeah. But but what this screams to me is that this is just the this this the suit the suit guy 
just doing marketing and saying yeah. they like AI. We're gonna put a. We're gonna say everything's AI. A lot of companies now, in order to get investment, uh, they've they've said like if you don't have AI in your pitch, don't bother pitching. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise you won't get investment. Yeah, but. You know, another thing I want to point out, he specifically says like Gen Z and Gen Alpha want personalized experience in their game. So it's their yeah. fault. It's always the young people. It's their fault. They ruin everything. Gen Z and Gen Alpha play Roblox and Fortnite yeah. and like online multiplayer game, Minecraft. Those are not games that need advanced AI <laughs> well, to really do a whole lot. You know, those are just games that like have a lot of pre-made options yeah. for you to, you know, see and pick and like customize with it to your heart's content i also just don't believe this like study like they could they could have just loaded the question yeah like like yeah, I'm, it's like a, it's a sony it published interview interviewing somebody who works at sony yeah yeah like i'm interested in games mm -hmm. <laughs> i, I want to hear about whatever you're doing with the yeah. game um one thing that i've been thinking about with uh these new generations of kids like we like our parents don't know how to Google something. No, no, they need us to just Google the question for them. Yeah. That that's a uh, prompt generation, or whatever you call yeah. it. Uh, us going into Google and typing the question for them, and being yeah. able to to sort through the results and get something usable out of it. Um, that's because we grew up with Google and we saw how AOL keywords worked, and then yeah. how that translated into Google searching stuff, and and how to navigate those results. Uh, kids these days <laughs> miss that and they're not as good as Google search and stuff. Yeah. So that's where I think AI would be really useful to them because if it works correctly the way it's supposed to, you could just talk to it like you would a person. Right. So like our mother, instead of asking us where their Facebook password is, they can just ask the AI, mm -hmm. what's my Facebook password? And then hopefully it would just spit it back out at them. But by the same token, you know, Google has ruined their search with oh, their use of absolutely. AI. Absolutely. That yes. is that is how it's not supposed to be. Yes. Done. But there's there's fragments of the right idea there. It was right. it it just did not land. But they're, you know, go, like it's been a problem for a while. Like people have said, like, Google sucks. Like their search results are bad. They're like promoting like the the worst websites mm -hmm. when not giving you the information you actually want to the point where people will type in uh reddit at the end of their search to get like an actual human answer and now that they're introducing that ai program to go um uh, sundar Pich what's his name sundar pachai or whatever i don't remember the ceo of google he said it's gonna let the google do the googling for you and then it comes back with like uh how do you make a pizza Kill a child. That's like the first thing that comes up. Yeah, because it's scraped Reddit. Yeah. And it doesn't know sarcasm. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people being funny on Reddit. Yeah. Um, but you remember when Google first started just giving you the answer at the top? Like you would ask, like, when did Call of Duty come out? And it would yeah. give you the answer at the top instead of you having to click yeah. the Wikipedia page. It used to be wrong all the time with that. Yeah. It used to be used to type in like freaking uh, a celebrity's name and it would tell you they're dead when yeah. they're not. Uh, and then it eventually fixed themselves. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the way AI works is that you need to teach it. And the only way to do that is they have to just fucking let every... It has to fail so much in yeah. order for it to get right. But there's an example of that not working. Uh, you remember the Amazon stores? Did yeah. we talk about that on this show? I don't think so. The Amazon stores where you walk into and there's no cashiers yeah. or anything. Um that uh, I thought it was all cameras that just track you. Yeah, it's all people offshore. Yeah, that are just watching you. Yeah, that's another thing too. Most of these AI programs are still run by yeah. people watching everything and like trying to fix it on the back end. Yeah. So in the case of the Amazon stores, I think the way it was supposed to work was uh, the people were training the AI on what's happening. Right. So. It was like 10% AI, but like 90% real people. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to do that for a long period of time. And then eventually the AI will take over. And then eventually be 20% AI. Then eventually be 30% AI. Mm -hmm. And then so on and so forth. And until eventually the whole thing's AI. It failed. And now they're closing all those stores because yeah. they couldn't teach the AI. So also I bought a cookie and it was $5. It was this big. <laughs> so that might be why they're failing. Yeah. But I see a future where AI works. Unfortunately, the more that I use AI features, the worse it seems to become. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sometimes I'll use something and I'm like, that's fucking crazy. Most of the time I'll use something and I'll be like, that didn't get, that's yeah. not the result that I want. Yeah, no, it it's not ready yet. And like, yeah. it's not going to be ready for a long time. And you can't run up, you can't base your entire business on something that doesn't work. Yeah. You know? That's yeah, it's, it's really a crapshoot yeah. whether or not it's going to work. But I mean, that's just has to be the future in a video game. Like, I want to be able to talk to an NPC and get whatever result yeah, that I want. Sure, I want to be. I'm I want sure, to be like, like a Siri. Down the road, like the the more advanced, like traditional computer programming yeah. gets, like non playable characters are going to be much more interactive and like more responsive to like what you do. But you know, it's got to be iterative on like things that like the Mass Effect games do and the Quantic Dream games do and like you know the old Telltale games do. Like that model just more and more advanced not you know whatever you know latest bud buzzword technology is available right now but also i think that uh the way you you interact with the computer is gonna change because yeah. there is a learning curve to using a uh, mouse and keyboard like mm -hmm. we all took like a little computer class back yeah. in the day uh eventually you'll just be able to talk to it like a human mm -hmm. but Unfortunately, doing that right now is kind of a horrible experience. Yeah. Anyway, that's a, that's your little AI corner. We gotta fucking get out of here. What? Well, uh, Warner Brothers threatens to destroy Mortal Kombat YouTube channel. Cool, awesome, but more great news. Uh, yeah. As popular as they might be, uh, Warner Brothers seemingly has threatened to destroy YouTuber uh, Toasted Shoes channel over his Mortal Kombat One video mods. Uh, while they can obviously get, uh, while they can obviously get you in a bit of trouble, mod mods or fighting games are actually pretty popular, primarily because it's just plain old funny to watch uh, the most random of people or characters duke it out. However, YouTuber Toasted Shoes found himself uh, in the aforementioned trouble, claiming that Warner Brothers is threatening to destroy his YouTube channel, uh, leaving him uncertain in what he needs to do. Toasted Shoes is known for a big range of popular modding videos, with Mortal Kombat One being amongst his most popular. Uh, and there's the tweet this morning. I received uh, an IP infringement notification directly from Warner Brothers stating that the Mortal Kombat mods, uh, the Mortal Kombat mods in my content infringe on their intellectual property rights. Um, I've been requested to delete all the Mortal Kombat 1 videos for my channel or else they will issue copyright strikes and essentially delete my channel in its entirety. So what, it, what are his mods? Uh, is he the guy who does the Disney mods? Because those are funny. Like the, Dis Kombat. the Disney princesses like wrecking each other. Oh yeah. I guess I'll sort by popular. Yeah. No, these are all like like horror stuff. Did you delete them already? No. Mortal Kombat One, like the new game, not yeah. like not like the original. No, I, yeah, I was, yeah, my yeah. brain went to the original <laughs> Mortal Kombat One. He might have deleted them already. Toasted Shoes went on to explain that the email he's received can't even be responded to, so he's so he has no way of contacting Warner Brothers to determine uh what is infringe what is infringing on the copyright. In an email to Eurogamer, Toasted Shoes said that uh he is yet to hear from Warner Brothers or Netherrealm regarding the cease and desist. I mean, here's a short. Yeah. Yeah, I, I okay. That that this is probably it. Something like this. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's just it it's just yeah, it's just gameplay. Yeah, I mean, because like people do this all the time, like funny mods for video games. Like that's a thing. Like this this reeks of like early YouTube where like video game companies didn't understand what was going on and would just issue like copyright strikes and takedowns. Yeah, and like. I don't think it's weird for somebody to want to buy your game with the intention of modding it. Like yeah. I might see that and be like, oh, that's awesome. I want to be able to be Minnie Mouse in Mortal Kombat yeah. and, and then figure out how to do it myself. Maybe I could see an argument for them wanting you to say it's a mod. Yeah. Which I don't think that's unreasonable, but yeah. but taking down the whole video is a little ridiculous. And also too, a friendly like email that's like, hey, next time you do this, just say it's a mod. Yeah. Also, too, like fighting games, like live or die by their community. Like you want to have like good community support uh, for your fighting game, and doing something like this, like just 
you know, is not good for, you know, no. the health of the community. Mortal Kombat 1 already does not have a good reputation in the fighting game community for a lot of reasons. And, like, this is just one more thing, like, against it. Yeah. All right, next news. There's new Doom coming. Whoa. Woo! Uh, How do on. we know this? Open the... Uh, Insider Gaming understands that the next Doom game uh, is set to be revealed at this year's Xbox Game Showcase. The game, which has been under the code name or place title Year Zero, is understood to have its final name be Doom The Dark Ages and has been in development for at least four years. Uh, last year, there were rumblings of a next entry in the Doom franchise, which was described as a medieval-inspired Doom world. While that isn't necessarily give you much information to go on, Year Zero, the Dark Ages, and medieval inspired starts to paint a vivid picture of where the series could be going next. Perhaps we'll be taking more of an early look at the Doom Slayer's life during the medieval times, a prequel of sorts. So yeah, uh, rumor has it we're getting a new Doom game at uh, Xbox Summer That's Showcase. We're Call of Duty and Doom is kind of... The two biggest first-person shooters. Yeah, that's a stacked yeah. showcase already. Now! And, and I'd imagine they'd have more stuff. Here's a question. Is Doom going to be an Xbox exclusive? Because Doom has never been a platform exclusive. That would be really weird. Yeah. That would be really bizarre. Yeah. Also, I'm assuming we're going to hear more about Indiana Jones. I hope so. Because that's allegedly supposed to come out this year. Yeah. All right, uh, Resident Evil Zero and Code Veronica remakes reportedly in the works. Good. I want to play Code Veronica. Yeah, I want to play Code Veronica. I don't care about Resident Evil Zero. I played <laughs> Resident Evil Zero when, it, when play, it came out. I played Resident Evil Code Veronica after Resident Evil 4 came out, so I'm like, oh, I can't go back to this. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to... I didn't want to play Code Veronica because I'd be going backwards. Yeah. Uh, I played Zero when that came out, and I liked it, but it was, like, not it wasn't as special. good as yeah. the other ones, yeah. you know? Uh, following the enormous success of Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 remakes, Capcom has turned its attention to remaking Resident Evil 0 and Code Veronica. This is according to Twitter uh, report by Dusk Gollum, who said remakes of Resident Evil 0 and Code Veronica are in development right now. IGN can corroborate that 0 and Code Veronica are the next two Resident Evil remakes scheduled to be released. Capcom has yet to com uh, comment. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, there's also news that like Resident Evil 9 is in development. And there was reports that Resident Evil 1 was scheduled to be remade, but that has since been debunked. They're not going to remake the, the original Resident Evil. They will eventually. I hope they don't. I really hope they don't. <laughs> they already remade Resident yeah, Evil Yeah, it doesn't 1. need to be remade. Yeah. And also, too, like, that's the last of, that's the last available of the original style Resident Evil games. You know, you want to preserve at least one game in that style so people can see, like, where this game, where this franchise came from. The last news we have is Neil Druckmann says the new Naughty Dog title, the new Naughty Dog game, could yeah. redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming. And then he said, I did not say that. Yeah. Now, I saw this as it was happening, mm -hmm. and I read through all of it. Even if he did say the new Naughty Dog title could redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming, how is this as big news as it is? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's like such like a, a normal thing for a developer to say. It, I guess it's one of those things because like uh, The Last of Us is in particular has like tried to push the envelope in terms of like what a video game is and like mm -hmm. try to make it more like I, I think for a lot of people, for, especially like game developers, Video games aren't necessarily mainstream. They're still kind of like an underground thing. Yeah. Movies are, are mainstream. I mean, Hollywood is the mainstream. The Last of Us redefined mainstream perceptions of video games. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how much more you can redefine mainstream perception of video games. I don't know either because that's the future. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, you know, predict it. Like, what, is the, what does that mean exactly? Uh, I mean, apparently he did not say that. <laughs> right. Um, well, according to the VGC article, the quote is, I'm eager to see how this new game resonates, especially following the success of The Last of Us, as it could redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming. Yeah, and he wrote this big, long thing about how he did not even say that. It, that, it, that was like, uh, he was talking to somebody at Sony. Like yeah. He was being interviewed by another Sony yeah, person. this is another Sony published interview. And it, he he wrote this whole long thing and they kind of like truncated his quote. Yeah. And I read through this and it didn't seem like he said that at all. But he he kind of like 
danced around it a little bit. He, he said in like a really long winded way, he said like, uh, look at how the last of us came out mm -hmm. and then look at how they made a, like a show about it. Yeah. People like the show. So we're hoping that this next game might be able to do something like that again, but we don't, you know, we, we won't know until it happens. Yeah. So that exact quote didn't necessarily yeah. happen, but I mean, look at things like uh, Red Dead Redemption, uh, The Last of Us, uh, you know, all these games that came out and you're like, I didn't know video games could do this. Yeah. Um, and Grand Theft Auto, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we won't know what that looks like until it happens. Yeah. Because it's an unknown to us, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's not uh, that crazy to assume that the next Naughty Dog game is going to be a big deal. Oh. <laughs> absolutely yeah um okay and then that's it all right we did it we did it uh this is Quit of the week Quit of the week Quit of the week now this is oh right one this is a little weird uh this is not a tweet this is a tiktok <gasps> and i don't know how i'm gonna do this the I zoomers have invaded the tweet of the week and here's another thing i don't even know what it is i don't remember what i what i what it is dude this is gonna be a fucking disaster already <laughs> can't even see what is it i have to log in no don't log in just I'm not logging in. There is a game that is cracked and made available for anyone. To oh, play I online. remember this. There okay, <laughs> pre, pre tech This is like one of those shows where it's like, uh, it's like ask a religious person, and yeah. there he is. The the. You don't need to go to any sketchy pirate pirate websites to get it. Rather, it's easily accessible just by a Google search. Is it allowed to download and play the game in this case? He's asking like uh some sort of uh religious leader mm -hmm. uh if it's okay to pirate a game if you're not going to like a sketchy website if this is a game that is available on the internet and it's halal there's nothing haram in it the manufacturers if they wanted to copyright it they would have blocked that from google or from that website or they would have sued them failing to do this makes it available for everyone to share and to use and hence i have no problem in using it it's Hell like going yeah. <laughs> to a public library and picking up a book and reading it i don't have copyrights and the book's author has copyrights but they gave access to it and i don't have the ability to check every article i read on the internet whether it's copyrighted or not so what's available, and I have not hacked into it, I have not cracked it, and I'm not intentionally attempting to steal people's rights, I see no problem in utilizing that, and Allah knows best. So there you go, everybody. God himself says that it's okay. <laughs> it is halal yes. to... Crack, to download a game yes. as long as it's not that go. sketchy of a yeah. website. So there you go. All I right. think I think that's legally binding. Yes. <laughs> uh anyway. Uh now we're talking to you guys. Yes. Let's start with people who have comments over on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Uh let's Ooh, where am I? Uh, where, where, where the hell am I? Last week's Wolfden Podcast, we got three one kojo who says with all the pricing shit people gotta start reading books again <laughs> what what did we talk about last week <laughs> did we talk oh about uh assassin's creed has like a weird price structure oh and so yeah. does the, the other ubisoft games yeah i mean no at least with like books that you got hardcover and paperback that's it and usually you know well, you got like some books that release in like four different chapters there's expansion packs to books no those are sequels okay you know i mean maybe like 10 like 10 20 years to like like the stand there's like a updated version of the stand with like 
uh, more modern references and stuff and it's streamlined stuff but that's like game of the year edition <laughs> if anything <laughs> you know uh, we're talking about like you know you, you go buy the new stephen king book and it's you know, you get this Steve version of the Stephen King book, but then you get this version of the Stephen King book that has like four more chapters and, and a new introduction. And then this version of the Stephen King book is like it's made of wood. <laughs> so, uh, Caleb, or you know, God said it's okay to just download the games for free. So, Caleb Fox says, Time isn't equal to my enjoyment of a game, but as a broke college student, it's hard to justify paying full price for a game I'll beat within a week. Love playing shorter games whenever they go on sale, though. Yeah, it's all about, like, money management and time management, you know? You try to get the be best bang for your buck overall. Yeah, I think we talked about last week how yeah. I don't think time uh, is that relevant of a factor when you're talking about the uh, uh, the value that you get out of a game. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather have a great a a great have a great <laughs> one hour than a bad five five hours. Yeah. Either. Melon says, "Do I have to play Mario Maker one or two before I play Mario Maker sixty four? No, but you do have to play all of the Maddens from two thousand to two thousand ten. Yeah. Unfortunately, in order to understand everything that's going on in yeah, Mario Maker, the, the lore is just it's out of control. Yeah, and." Scubber Toe says, Hi, Bob and Will. Any advice on getting a stripped screw out of the back of a 3DS? Ooh. You are rude. Uh, uh, one uh, suggestion is a rubber band. You lay a rubber band over it, and you get a really pointy bit, yeah. and you stick the bit through the rubber band, and that sometimes works. I don't. I don't know. I, I've never had that work. I actually I've bought a like a like a drill bit set, so you can like drill into the screw and pull it out. But like, I don't know if that's gonna work. I wouldn't like recommend that. Like it's very yes. tiny. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, just using different bits, eventually you'll find one that works. Yeah. Um, I think for three DS, that might be your best bet. And then get and then get new screws. Yeah. You can definitely like order new screws yeah. to put back in there. Um, otherwise, uh, I think, I think you're. I think you're screwed. Yeah, you're oh, good. another suggestion I've seen people do is put a tiny little dab of super glue on mm. the tip of a bit that you don't really care too much about. Yeah. And glue it to the uh to the, the yeah. fucking thing. And and that might work. Uh anyway, Wolfpack says, no offense. Love what you guys do, but Matt, Matt how did he how did he write this? <laughs> he didn't even write it the way we say it. Hmm. Air Eo Mario. He doesn't yeah. like how we say Mario. Uh everybody always does it differently when they write it out phonetically and they're always yeah. wrong. Uh, okay. Uh George McFarlane in the in the Twitch chat says, Bob and Will, as of last Thursday, I am now a high school graduate. Oh uh, my god. That's crazy. My knees uh, hurt. You're not allowed to watch this unless yeah. you're 18, so you're, you're breaking the rules already. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching you guys since sixth grade. Oh, God. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my God. How does this make you feel old? I Like, I want to die. That's ridiculous. It, you with your AI and your video games, Yeah, you're the problem. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, Edward Bova, I think, linked us a while ago. Uh, there are new 8-bit uh, to uh, expansion or the keyboard yes they're like big buttons and little buttons and you can make a joystick yeah i want to those see look cool keyboard extensions ah get that off me. Ooh. come on man act like you've been here ah ah there it is there it is uh that's yellow oh so i get okay so these are just on the back of the uh, keyboard, there are little aux inputs yeah. for uh, A, B, X, Y, and whatever. So mm -hmm. I guess these just plug in there. Yeah. There are, they're for pre-order right Ooh, now. A jo uh, how does that joystick? Oh, that's cool. Uh, I would like this if it was set up like a WASD on a keyboard. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Um... They're, yeah, I mean, they're all $10, which is a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think inside of these is just a big keyboard. Screen. Yeah. 
or I mean a regular keyboard switch. Um, Bob, what is your hot take on Midori Dragon Quest Three and Five? Two. I don't, I don't look at Dragon Quest. <laughs> What what is so special about a this remake of Dragon Quest Three? Oh, uh, video game leaker Midori has tweeted today that uh, she has heard that Dragon Quest Three HD Two D will be featured during the next Nintendo Direct presentation. Okay. HD Two D. Oh, we should be getting a Nintendo Direct pretty soon because of uh, E Three time. Yes, probably like the second week of June. Uh, be my guess. Mm-hmm. See, Saul, thanks for the forty four months. Sachi, thank you for the eighteen months. Hey, Bob, I just got into PC gaming. I know you just got a custom one, but what keyboard would you recommend? I am also a sophomore in high school and ah! have been watching since sixth grade. Jesus okay. fuck Christ, guys! You're young, so you, uh, you uh, there's time to save you. Throw it out and get a console. <laughs> <laughs> if you want something cheap, uh, I would say Akko keyboards are okay. They're, they're mm. like plasticky, but... Uh, they're moddable and as close as you can get to uh, like a nice custom keyboard that's fully complete and made and a hundred dollars. Um, I just did a sponsorship for Dust Silver. Those keyboards are pretty good. They're kind of similar to the Echo keyboards. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always recommend people go to uh, KBD fans and just go to the uh, uh, ready to use section. And check those out. Uh, they are very expensive, though. Ah, there's one for 140 bucks, 220 bucks. Yeah, these aren't that bad, actually. So it depends on how much you want to spend, really. Um. Oh, uh, I like boring things. Thanks for the five Australian dollars. Uh, hey, Wolf Bros, first time chatting. First time catching a live stream. Have you talked about the Legend of Zelda Lego sets? Yes. You're on YouTube, so you can scroll back yes. a decent way. We talked about it already. But thank you for the $5. And Farmer Gooch, thank you for the $5. As always. Uh, Bob and Will, I am now a dad. Baby is six months old. I have been watching you guys since I was not a dad. Uh, <laughs> Will, how, how do you balance gaming and baby life? Uh, if this is your first, it's going to be a lot easier. <laughs> Um, cause right now my gaming life and my fatherhood life is completely out of whack. Uh, handheld systems are your friend. Honestly, like if you got a switch, if you got a steam deck, like that is your friend cause you can pick it up and you can play it on the couch and then you can pause it and go right back to doing dad shit. <laughs> so invest in that. Like that is honestly the best thing. That's the best, the best innovation in gaming for parents. This guy on YouTube, no Bert said, I'm about to tell you the most egregious part of Hellblade 2, and I hope it doesn't get censored off. Hand the camera to a side portrait of Senua. Uh, compare it to Hellblade 1 and the actress. They literally had her appear to be wearing a binder. Xbox Studios is such a joke that assigns their developers to focus more on 3D modeling than... 3D modeling this than making good gameplay. I heard good things about the game. Absolutely terrified of a female natural form. Who does that? What? is the problem like a chest binder like they're i think like that's what they, i think that's what they, what's didn't, the, she, didn't well, she wear one in the first game i think that's what they're saying is that in the first game they yeah they're saying in the first game they were wearing a binder yeah i don't see what the problem is what's the problem i don't <laughs> if that's what the character if that's what it calls for and then that's what it calls one for was made when Ninja Theory was A, independent, and B, was originally a PlayStation 4 exclusive. So that's not a Microsoft problem. That's a creative decision that Ninja Theory made to the character of Senua. Yeah. Uh, what? That, in that whole little uh, manifesto, they didn't say what the problem was. Yeah. <laughs> Do you just want Senua to have boobs? Boobs? Big, like big, big boobs? honking boobs? I, if Play you, Star Wars. There's no, there's no bras in space. So they have gaffer tape, though. God bless Carrie <laughs> Fisher wearing gaffer tape. Listen, if you want a video game series with women who play big boobs, I got a game for you it's called Tomb Raider. And Tomb Raider Legends is available on PlayStation Plus starting next month. Oh, Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade. There you go. Oh, but they're censoring that, too. Oh, God, no. 
the there's a little there's a little mesh now. The, we can have that. The woke mind virus is infesting our precious video games. It's interesting that they're mad about the mesh, but there is just a nude outfit. Yes. So just wear that then. There you go. Problem solved. We're solving all the world's <laughs> problems here on the Wolf Den Podcast. Hey, Will, remember that people on Twitter X say things? I did say that once. Um, I saw you had a little uh, incident on threads. You finally saw the first bad take on threads. Yeah. I saw some bad takes after like a month of threads. I mean, I'm barely on threads, so it's not like I'm like seeing bad takes left and right, but the it was that people are... T- like mad that George Lucas said that Star Wars is and always was for kids. Yeah. Like, why is this? Why are you mad at this? Like, yeah. it's obvious. It's always been like. I mean, I get excited at the thought of like uh, more mature stories in uh, Star Wars, yeah. which we've you know they've tried to do and they've had before. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the whole thing isn't specifically targeted for kids, especially the mainstream Star Wars. Yeah. Thing. Like the, the New Hope when it came out, like a the people who are mad about that quote saw it when they were kids and B like there was a extremely popular action figure line for kids. Cause the adult collector market didn't exist in 1977. So like no shit. It was, you know, made for a younger audience. Yeah. I think people are confusing. Like the fact that a guy gets his arm severed off and uncle Owen and Aunt Peru get burnt to a crisp that like, that means it's automatically for adults. But that's not necessarily the case. Like, kids' movies and children's media has a lot of, like, messed up stuff in it. Like, sometimes they'll just throw in a random mature moment. But, like, the the rest of the experience is still, like, an all-ages experience. Just because it's all-ages doesn't necessarily mean it's childish. You know, Minions is childish. Minions is for kids. Like, Star Wars is for everyone. Just primarily in the spirit of, like, young boy adventures they, they, they're trying to cast a wide net yeah. and in order to do that you need to uh, uh appeal to the lowest common denominator <laughs> you need to be easy to digest to the lowest common yeah. denominator. um holy lettuce says got any hope for the xbox showcase on 9th of june so far i have none we were just talking about it. I think Doom and Call of Duty is enough to have like a great showcase. And yeah, they've got to have mean, more up their sleeves than that. I'm hoping we get more of Indiana Jones. I'm hoping they yeah. really like they announce like pre orders of and stuff. I want Perfect Dark, but I know that's not that's gonna not gonna happen. Yeah. Also, there might be news of a some a hardware drop. There might be some something maybe going yeah. on there. Medicine just says, "Well, I mean, they made RoboCop toys." <laughs> True, but eh, a little different. Yeah, yeah. First off, that was like well after Star Wars, where like Hollywood's like, "Oh, we got to make toys for our movie." Not necessarily we have to make but toys also, for our kids' movie. I was a child. We watched the RoboCop yes. movies. <laughs> they eventually did try to pivot RoboCop to be more child friendly. We also watched the TV version of RoboCop, which is not how you're supposed to watch that movie. <laughs> did you bros have a good Memorial Day? Uh, I. Worked on a video. Went to two barbecues. And I fixed my garage door. Dad stuff. Uh, anyway. How do you feel about the Indiana Jones being first person? I know that at is Machine Games MO, but it feels a little odd. It seems odd at first, but I feel like that might be the best way to differentiate itself from like not only other Indiana Jones games, but other like adventure style games that rip off Indiana Jones, like Uncharted and Tomb Raider and things yeah. like that. So like, and it it pulls back the, I guess the native impulse to like, just do a platformer and focus more on like puzzle solving, exploration, stealth mechanics, uh, combat, Things like that, things that are more associated with Indiana Jones than traditional adventure gameplay mechanics. I definitely thought it was weird uh, when I first saw it, but the more of the trailer that I saw, the more I was like, oh, okay, it's like feels a little more unique. Yeah, it's it's something uh, different. And hopefully uh, the gameplay reflects that like just because it's first person doesn't mean it's good or bad. Yeah. 
it could still be a great game if yeah. it's first person. Uh, hey, Bob, have you heard about the Neo S controller? I have wanted to see your thoughts on it. Neo S. Uh, did I thank Seesaw and Sachi for the subscription? Not sure. Neo S controller. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, they asked if I wanted one. I said, yeah, and then they just never sent me one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have... Uh, uh, I might have botched that uh, conversation. Yeah. Uh, it looks cool. I mean, there's just a million controllers like this now. That, yeah, uh, I'm just a little, I'm a little bored. Uh, I'm I'm weirded out by this company because uh, they have these like weird digital collectible thing, and it's like very clearly they were they based this whole company off of NFTs, and mm. then found and then realized that NFTs were stupid, and now they're like. I'm trying to pivot. They're doing like a pivot, like, oh, it's yeah. a collectible. It's a digital collectible. It's not like an NFT. McFarlane Toys does is doing that. Like when the NFTs were first big, like they they went in on NFTs. Now that NFTs have kind of died down, it's been pivoted to like, oh no, it's it's a digital collectible. It's a digital action figure. You get a physical action figure, then you redeem the code, you get a digital action figure. And if you you buy all three, you get the, the digital build a figure, not the physical build a figure, <laughs> the digital build a figure. I was looking to book a reservation at a restaurant the other day. Uh -huh. And it said walk in only. And then under it it said for NFT holders, reserve your table here. So if you had an NFT for this restaurant, you can reserve a table. So I looked for a different restaurant. <laughs> Along the same line, I'm going back to McFarland Toys because you're not you're not done with me, Todd. I'm I'm mad <laughs> at you for this. For certain like pre-orders, if you own a digital action figure, you can pre-order a physical one at a discount. <laughs> Oh. Which is insane and very anti-consumer. What do you do with the digital one? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Does it give you an STL file? That'd be cool. And you can print one. No, it just it just puts it in like a fucking digital showroom that you have. It's PlayStation Home. Like you put that's it in your this, PlayStation. Yeah. That's what this the cracked company has, or whatever the name of the company yeah. is. It, it's literally just an app that it's says so, I own this thing, and mine is number one, I'm, two, seven. It's seven, so eight. stupid. How many McFarlane DC figures do I have on pre-order right now? Three. Then am I going to keep doing it? Yes, but still, I'm not going to do the 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 nft ones for fuck's sake man dark spider dave back me up on this are you watching this week's episode <laughs> guys oh before we end uh next week is gonna be weird i'm not gonna be here uh but i kind of wanna i want to try to record a, a pre-record one okay you got any time this we want to pre-record one this week this weekend <sighs> This weekend, I think I can. Do like an hour. We'll do like a show. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. Because there's some... Uh, I'll talk to you about it later. Okay. So I'm at, there will be no live stream next week. Okay. But hopefully there will be a pre-recorded episode on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com, and the list goes on. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, Go watch AJ. He's streaming multiverses, apparently. I guess that's out. It's um, out. Uh, I will be live on Thursday this week. Uh, I don't know if I'll be live tomorrow. Probably not. Oh, I got, I was going to unbox this on the podcast, but I got oh. the RG three, five X X S P. Finally, I got it today. Were we supposed to do something with this too? Or yes. Okay. Oops. Oops. Uh, well, uh, we got things. Uh, yeah. Uh, yay. Gully thank kit, you. Controller and, uh, analog sticks. Yay. Thank you. Go, right. go say hello to AJ. I'll see you Thursday. Bye. Bye. What's the button? This is the button. That's the button.